UNC is just quite a remarkable story in its own right. What uh, what was yeah. your front row seat, literal, figurative uh, view of it, Ian? Yeah, we uh, we obviously went in with the idea that maybe these guys just don't feel any fear or any stress, and any intimidation going against blue blood programs. What they did against Kentucky, the win over Murray State, that was mid-major against mid-major, and then the victory over Purdue, that was really a shocker based on the fact that the Boilermakers had time to prepare for them, had tape to watch, had a feel for what they were going to do, and just had so much raw size, and still St. Peter's found a way to win. Uh, we we saw Dan Gavitt just before the game got underway. He made a great point uh, when we asked his opinion on the matchup. And he said, UNC, although this is not a normal role for them, they've kind of had that underdog mentality the last few weeks. They were on the bubble. They finished the ACC season strong. They obviously got the win at Duke at Cameron and then uh, the showing in the ACC tournament. And that mentality probably put them in a better frame of mind than Kentucky or Purdue when they played St. Peter's because so much was expected of them, and both teams thought they had a chance to win a national championship. So in this particular matchup, they may have benefited St. Peter's by going against UCLA than North Carolina in just the idea that they could still maybe sneak up on someone despite everything they accomplished. UNC, they've already been through the roller coaster of emotions this year, and they're just getting stronger and stronger as they go. I, I thought they were, they were lights out. They were money. They were impressive from the word go. They looked like one of the best teams in the country. And that game against Duke, I mean, my gosh, you can't make it up. You cannot make up that matchup. I mean, I said at the top of the show, it's like Packers-Bears in the NFC Championship game, Yankees-Red yeah. Sox in the ALCS. This is it. It's go time. Unreal. Yeah, it's a dream matchup. And it's funny, when these things come about and you start getting the, the notes and the nuggets that are connected to it, you do a double take. So I'm doing my prep, and you would just assume that you know this already, being a sports fan. But they have never played in the NCAA tournament. You write that down on your prep sheet. You say, how? How is that possible with the history between these two programs? With the legacy of greatness, you would just assume somewhere along the line they would have played in a Sweet 16, in an Elite Eight, in a Final Four, in a national championship game. No. Uh, they were only in the same Final Four once, 1991. Didn't play one another. That was, of course, the Duke-UNLV semifinal matchup the retribution game, and it was Kansas, the remnants of the Danny and the Miracle squad that mm. played North Carolina in the other semi. Kansas advanced, and we know Duke advanced. Duke won the national championship. That was the first of many for Mike Krzyzewski. So uh, the fact that it's happening now in Coach K's final year, mm. that it was unexpected from a UNC standpoint, and then add that additional layer of what happened in Coach K's final home game as a coach – the way UNC took over the game, embarrassed Duke at the end, and all of the alums, former players that are standing there and had to watch it with the rest of the crowd, dumbfounded, uh, it just it, it just adds a whole other vibe to this semifinal matchup. It's it's nirvana. It's college basketball nirvana. This is the kind of stuff you root for. And so, yeah, I guess when you think about it, Ian, uh, that if if a team is like if Duke and Carolina are both, you know, seated one or two in in di different regions, yep. it's, it stands to reason like they 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 wouldn't meet, right? Just be, for merely unless yep. unless they get to the same Final Four. So you got one now seated eighth. It would make sense that Duke and Carolina could play each other at some point in the Sweet Sixteen. But the fact is that they're coming from different parts of the bracket is unbelievable. And as you pointed out, the Cameron Indoor setup. I'm kind of sitting here wondering like if that gives UNC more confidence in a game like this, or Duke has a revenge angle they normally wouldn't have, you know what I mean, to erase that. Those kids who might be terribly upset and saw Coach K sort of admonish the crowd for cheering when he's like that that was a bad performance. I'm wondering if these kids will now use that as a clarion call to erase that by winning yeah. this game, you know? Excellent, excellent question. 
you know, the other part of the equation is the fact that the committee for all of these years, I think they've tried to avoid right. having Duke and UNC play in early rounds because of the history between the two, because they're coming from the same conference. They really do make an effort to try to avoid those kinds of matchups early because the tournament is supposed to be about other matchups, new matchups, uh, new uh, rivalries that emerge based on the NCAA tournament. Everything you laid out is 100% true. Uh, You get to this stage, and I think each team probably has their own narrative of – of what it is that's motivating them at this point, the disrespect that UNC was feeling, the fact that Hubert Davis was being questioned early in his coaching tenure after replacing a legend in Roy Williams. They got crushed by Kentucky. It was an embarrassing nationally televised game by 20-plus points. They lost to Purdue rather handily. There were these these little markers along the way that, that led us to believe that North Carolina wasn't a legitimate team this year, and yet... They came together and found chemistry at the most important time. And then for Duke, all the expectations, you're looking at future NBA stars on the team, and you you start questioning, well, maybe it's just not the right mix, or uh, maybe they just don't have uh, that that fire lit inside them. That was the concern watching that UNC-Duke game at Cameron. Nobody seemed to want it. And I know they wanted it for Mike Kay, (laughs) but they couldn't seem – to make it happen on the court there there were shots being passed up in the final three and a half minutes and nobody really stepped forward and all that has changed in the ncaa tournament whether that flipped the switch or that opened their eyes or they just needed to get past that moment with all of those great duke players in attendance and and it spooked them out who knows whatever it is they're playing at such an exceptionally high level and they did get tested it's not like they've plowed through the first four rounds of the tournament, we have seen them pushed a little bit. So to me, that's a really good sign for Duke as well, that uh, they come in battle-tested for this Final Four and everything that is going to come with it, which is a great deal of media attention. Uh, they're they're going to feel the weight of the Final Four and Coach K's legacy talked about for the next five days in, at infinitum. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.